Hello and welcome to this episode of Watercolour Wizard. Today we're going to draw and paint this Dolmen, a wonderful collection of standing stones which has all sorts of different significance uh, for people in the world. So my idea is to draw it freehand and to paint it using four random colours as usual. So I have posterized this image into three tones, white, grey and black. But as you can see, there's a lot of uh, very subtle texture all over the stones. And so they appear to be quite mottled and they're only limited areas of strong black or st strong white. Mostly it's an intermingling. Okay. But as we can see, uh, under the stone there, it's at its darkest. Then it's got some reflected light from the ground, so it's grey. And there, on this flank, where it's catching the direct light, is practically white. <clears throat> and actually burns away, you know, into the sky. I've got rid of all the background hills and everything, and I've just left a little collection of fallen stones that are a nice anchor into the ground for this, for this subject. Okay, so I'm going to start my drawing. As before, you can choose to, uh, you know, quarter off the drawing to give you some sort of a reference guide. I rarely do this, but I'm just showing you one way of uh, drawing. So I've quartered it off roughly just to give you some help with proportions and placements, okay? And then what you need to do is do a similar set of uh, coordinates on the actual paper. I'm drawing straight onto tracing paper. So when I've done my drawing, I can then transfer my drawing onto my watercolour paper and not have any rubbing out and false starts and things. And so that's roughly the middle, maybe it's a bit higher, roughly. Okay, so there's my, those are my helping lines. Okay, zoom out a tiny bit more, right? Okay, so here we go. I'm going to go on to speed, silent drawing now. If you want to slow it down and see me drawing it slowly, if you've got that amount of time, you can click the little settings box, which will be in the bottom corner of this video. It's a little settings wheel. It's like a little cog, like a gear cog in a machine. If you click on that, you can either ask, uh, ask it to go faster or ask it to go slower. Okay, so I've got my <clears throat> basic dolman shape and when I put it down onto the paper, I'll be transferring it and not pressing so hard so that when I come to rub away and add sort of textural effects on the edges, I won't have a hard pencil line to deal with and to fight with my eye. So I'll be putting that line on a, a bit soft, as soft as I can, because I want you to be able to see it. But it, when you're doing it for yourself, put it on as softly as you can, and then you can rub it away. 
So I've got a piece of stretched Milford 140 pounds paper stretched on my nine millimeter ply board. Okay, again, there's a video on how to stretch paper. The link for that is in the description of this video. So let's get this image on here now. And as usual, I'll place my trace down sheet underneath it and start to trace the image down. There's a link also in my description on how to make trace down. Make sure that when you put it on, you secure it with something heavy so that it doesn't move about. Or you can use, you know, some tape to tape it in place. And as you can see, the image is coming out really strongly there. I'll carry on without filming this to save some time, okay? Okay, so I've got my, I got my tub of paints. I'm going to take out those four colours that I used for the previous watercolour wizard so that I haven't got those. And I'm just going to work with the paints that are left. Cover. Okie dokie. Right, so I'm going to pick out four. Right. One, two, three, four. What have I got? Oh, my word. <laughs> right, they zoom in on these. What have I got? Right, okay. Cobalt turquoise. I must have had a I must have had a separate tube of tur cobalt turquoise. Yes, it's by a different make. Oh well that's no good. I'll have to leave that out. Amazonite genuine, right. I'm definitely keeping that one. But this one is too similar to the one I had last tutorial. Then I've got manganese blue. Okay, well we'll have manganese blue. <laughs> and then we've got pyrrole red. Let's put my hand on there one more time, pick another colour. oops, pick another colour. What's this? Oh, right, okay. This is going to be very interesting. <laughs> Quinacridone rust. Okay, so pyrrole red. I got a red, I've got a rust, which is a little bit of a sort of golden chestnutty colour. I've got a very cool blue, well, not a very cool blue, but a blue heading towards the sort of um, greenish sort of side and then amazonite genuine which is a pure uh, mineral green so that's going to be a bit of a challenge isn't it well i'm going to go with it and i'm going to just test my colors out on a piece of paper to see how they look and how they might blend together So now I'm going to start by wetting the entire inside of the dolmen with cold, clear water. And this is to open up the paper to receive the washes and we'll get soft edges wherever I put the paint. This takes a little bit of time and is called painting wet into wet. So now I'm going to add some pyrrole red 
As you can see by the way the paint is flaring, I should have really waited a little bit longer for the water to soak in a little bit more. Um, but I'm so excited to get, to get this red on that I've uh, jumped in a little bit too early. Never mind, it's given me some very unusual swirly and bleed effects. Look at that. I really like that. That's something I've never done before. And again, because it's on moist ground, if anything goes a little bit too awry, we can just wipe it out with a thirsty brush. That's the beauty of painting wet into wet. So I'm just being very accurate now with the last two hairs of that brush on the corners of that dolmen capstone, if that's the word, and getting those edges crisp. But then, as you can see, inside that slab, there's a lot of mottling and granulation going on. And I'm just softening it away now because the top and flanks of that stone are very pale compared to the underside of it. So I'm just tentatively brushing out some of that weaker red paint, just so I've got a visible form of that shape but not so that it's really, really dark on the top. So I'm moving into one of the actual feet now, or legs of the dolmen. And again, because I'm moistening that area and touching up into the still active red paint, it's bleeding down in really lovely, organic ways. I'm, I really like the look of that. As you can see, the, the, the paint, the medium, is doing its own thing. Watercolour is very mercurial. And doing small subjects like these, you know, is great because you can do some experimentation, really get to know your paints. Uh, this is quinacridone rust going on, by the way, now. And this, again, bleeds out. It's quite, uh, uh, you know, extrovert as a paint. You put it on and it bleeds out, outwards from where you've put it on the paper. Yeah, these small studies are great for experimenting. They're not a big outlay with regards to drawing or time. And um, you can play around with them using random colours, honing your watercolour wizard skills. It is nice though, isn't it, to feel you haven't got to stick to orthodox colours and have some gr grounding and some experience in doing just that, using colours that uh, are not usual and are not recommended as such. And then you can plough your own furrow, I think, and just explore. Because something you paint then with those unorthodox colours will be really unique and different. Something that hasn't been seen before, maybe, which is a nice feeling, especially when you're a beginner painter. So into that, I added some manganese blue hue, and that, because uh, manganese blue uh, and Quinn Rust, you know, is, is sort of complementary because um, there's a bit of orangey colour in the rust and orange and blue are complementary and that's giving a lovely s sort of dark there. Now I'm cutting in to give some fissures on the top of that rock and getting those very dark passages in as per the grayscale image that you'll have if you want to get the paint along pack. Um, yeah, I should mention the paint along pack. You can get this. It's normally a two page printable. It's got the grayscale, which I've created for you on it. It's got the outline, which I've drawn on it, and it's got the finished painting as well. I list the paints I use, although, of course, I'd rather you use your own. And if you if you buy that, it's three pounds. The link for that is in the description below. And when you buy that, not only will you get the Paint Along Pack, but you'll get a free entry to upload your finished painting from the Watercolour Wiz onto a closed Google Gallery. And from that gallery, I pick three random people every month to do a mini online critique for. And uh, that's quite a nice thing if you want eyes on your work, 
If you want some feedback to these projects that we're doing here, then please consider donating. Um, also on the Google Gallery, you can talk to other people and comment on their work. And there's a little bit of a, you know, a group, a nice sort of like-minded group on there, which you might find enjoyable. And obviously, donations help me to carry on spending time filming these videos and offering them for free on YouTube. So into that now, I've added some Amazonite Genuine, and you can see it's getting much darker now on that right-hand flank of the first um, foot. And I'm also putting it in under that very dark shadow on the underside of the capstone. And I'm working still wet into wet. My, my paper has remained wet. Um, this is because I gave it a good soak in, plus it's a 100% cotton rag. And cotton, well, I say cotton rag, 100% cotton is what you'll probably find uh, more commonly listed. It holds a lot more moisture than wood pulp paper or cellulose paper. So cotton paper is your friend. It will stay moist a lot longer. So I'm adding some very muted greys now because, as you can see, those little areas are away from the main stone and we don't want bright colours away from the main stone because the main stone is the centre of focus. So when you move away from the centre of focus, you can mute your colours, mute them down and have them less uh, eye-grabbing. So I'm softening those dark areas up into the remaining two feet of the dolmen now. And as you can see, there's still a lot of adjacent bleed going on. Some of them look a bit ugly and I'll be brushing them away. And some of them look quite nice texturally uh, in keeping with the sort of surface qualities of the stone. So again, if you're painting wet into wet, you've got the chance to rub out any any flares or bleeds that look a bit, you know, bruised or don't don't look very nice. So I'm uh, sometimes I push the the heel of the hairs of the brush into the paper to give me a sort of broken edge when I want to blend something away. Now let's have some quinacridone rust now, just to change the colours a little bit and to echo the quinacridone rust that's in the left hand side of the left hand uh, foot. A bit of grey now, that's a mixture of manganese blue and a little bit of the quinacridone rust as well. Now I've added a bit more pyrrole red into this, a bit more of a stronger colour stone in front, which makes those two paler reddish legs recede. And then just tapering it away as if it's bedding into the, the ground uh, around the dolmen. So now some richer touches of quinacridone rust on the right hand side of some of these stones to just give a bit more shadow shape. Again, I don't want them to be too bright because they'll fight with the capstone, which is the brightest red and the, the, the deepest colour. So that's our focus point, focal point. So as you see, I'm using the side of my brush to give a scruffy edge, broken edge, because the paper's got a little bit of tooth to it. It's, it's cold pressed, so it's got a little bit of texture and I can make those broken edges a bit more easily. So now I'm going in with some much hotter red, smaller brush, 
because I don't want it to bleed so far. I'm trying now to add some sort of downward striations to show the, the sort of the grain, you know, and the way that sort of the grain of the stone lies, sort of downward vertical markings. And that brush wasn't very wet. And then again, these sort of edges of the capstone, I want them to be a bit more chiselled and have a little bit more of the grain and the direction of the way the stone is composed, visible on the top there, just for a bit of uh, texture, a bit of detail. Of course, I'm putting these colours into still moist paper and so it's still getting that soft uh, finish. A bit more burnt um, quinacridone rust, sorry, in the base there, because that's coming forward. Hot colours come forward and also darker tones are usually found in the foreground than in the distance. And there is a highlight, if you look at your grey scale, the, the, the lighter sides are all on the left-hand side of those feet on the dolman. So I'm using my Matthew Palmer lift-out brush again to lift out some paler areas along that edge. And then again, looking at your grayscale, wherever you can see, you know, there's light there, some right there. There's a little chink, that is a side, there's a flank, you know, on that one leg on the left. And so wherever you can see definite areas of white, get them in, you know, as best you can. It won't be exact. But just to acknowledge them, and it gives you painting then some more 3D quality. So each time I'm lifting out some paint, I'm then rinsing the brush and wiping it on a clean flannel uh, terry cloth. I'm doing some stippling there. paint that I'm lifting out now is still not bone dry and that's why it's given itself up quite readily. So you can see there's some just some slight undulations on the surface of those feet now, which I think looks quite nice. It's sort of a bit like cloudy. Uh, there are blooms of colour and different transitions from one tone to another. Now this is the flank on this left hand edge I want to get because it's, it's like a cut surface, you know, it's like a flattened surface on that curve of the dolman which sows the workings of prehistoric man or whoever made these. And there's a bit of reflected light bounce up under there, which I want to get in. There's a nice contrast then to that strong dark. Shows where the light is jumping up and around the dolmen. And then on the left-hand side of these, some of these boulders that have field stones left, you know, sort of fallen down uh, on the ground. They've got some highlights as well. 
and they separate themselves then from the, the dolmen behind it. So I'm moving to a smaller Matthew Palmer brush now, just a little bit more fine chiselling and wiping away work. If you wanted to, you could have masked out some little fissures with a very small masking uh, pen or a masking brush. You could have done it any way you like. You know, you can choose to use masking fluid to add the texture before you start with the paint or do lift outs like I'm doing now. Lots of ways of getting the same result or a similar result and maybe even a little bit of fine spatter with uh, masking fluid, say spattered from a toothbrush onto the, t the surface texture of the stonework would have been really effective too. And that's where we are at the moment. Just soften that blue there, make that edge a bit more visible. Yeah, mm, nearly, ne yeah, that's better. That was jumping out at me there. And this corner is important to show directional change. So I want to make sure that corner is visible there. It's better. Right, so I'm at the last stage now where I want to introduce these strong darks once again. <coughs> Excuse me. There, the actual sort of darkness that's right under this top slab here. Then some of these chinks, which are very dark, and some stones around the periphery and under that edge there. Okay. So for that, I'm going to mix up a warm puddle. The shadows that uh, are underneath things tend to reflect light bounce from the ground and so they tend to be quite warm. So I'm going for the pyro red and the quinacridone at uh, rest. And then to darken that wall off but uh, not to lose it entirely is some amazonite genuine. That's the colour I've got there. I'm going to move to a smaller brush so that I don't overload things, a size 6. And then I'm also going to have size uh, 3, a moist one, which I've wet and flicked. Just a moist brush at the ready to soften off any hard edges that might occur when I'm putting on the final shadow work. So let's go in a bit closer. That is really dark in there. And there's another adjacent stone which has a very dark cap to it. There's a little light bounce around this, this area here so we can see that second stone. And I want to get that right close up to the strawberry coloured and light struck stone to the right. So I'm going to hide that white chink of paper, get rid of that. 
that's about how far I want to come across there because there is that slight sort of flank feel about the stone there. We can see that it's got an edge. So I'm rinsing my brush and I'm flicking my brush and I'm softening that down into the rest of the stone and then giving it some scraggy dry brush in as well and some scraggy dry brush in on that edge let's bed that in as well okay so that's my strong shadow layer let's just go in with a little bit more strength right under there okay and there's a bit of a curve and then it comes over here drops down into this second sort of paler colour one and then under there this is the very strong shadow now And then it comes out and goes up to about there where that turn starts. And then it starts to fade as it goes out to the right. So I'm going to rinse my brush, flick my brush again. And this time I'm going to soften from up here, from above, so that the shadow will blend up into my damp area that I'm leaving with my brush. Rinse my brush, flip my brush, and then soften that edge off as well. And then let's have a few little um, anchors of this very dark shadow up into the fissures of the top of the slab. Because it is all broken and has a rough edge and then I'm going to dry brush some of this paint that's uh, adjacent onto the right hand side of this standing stone similarly dry brush some of this dark tongue onto the third stone and I'm going to pick up some more and then brush it up, dry brush up into the last sort of edge of that rock stone and make some downward striations there. Okay lastly with the shadow there's a real dark shadow in there and in there and there and then I speck them away then I leave little specks <coughs> to let them Bleed away. So the dark one there. And over there. Okay, so those all will need a little bit of softening. That one needs to be softened up into that boulder. And then a few specks there. And maybe take some of that and put it on the right hand side, which would be in a bit of shadow. just softening them out add in a bit of shadow under there as well because it's underneath this heavy stone and I think I'm going to call that done 
So I hope you'll enjoy experimenting with that, whatever, whatever four colours that you've got. That was something unusual for me because um, the normal colour of this stone is you know, granite, which is grey. So we've done a sort of playful, colourful one in red, rust, sky blue and some emerald green. So thanks again for watching and if you'd like to make a donation that would be very welcome to help me continue to make these tutorials and when you make a donation you'll also get the chance to enter whatever you paint into our monthly Google Gallery and from there I'll pick three people to critique their work and I'll pick three people to give them prizes of either a, a PDF magazine or a PDF of one of my watercolour animals. So thanks so much for your support. I hope you enjoy following the watercolour wizard. If you'd like to make any comments below, that really helps as well. And the thumbs up, clicking that actually does do my channel some good. So it's worth doing that if you feel you've enjoyed it. And hearts and all the rest of the malarkey. Thanks very much. I'm Alison Fenn, the Pottering Artist. See you next time.